I made a grave mistake. The kind that cannot be fixed. It all began with a war between two mighty deities. A conflict with dire consequences. The fighting rent the very fabric of our world. As the crack deepened, it has spread like the grasping roots of a tree. And through that fissure, something terrible escaped. Something unnatural. The destruction affected countless realms. Many beyond our knowledge. But then, when all seemed lost, a deity created a holy sign. A way to seal the crack and stop the blight. And for many years there was peace. But even an instrument of order can be dangerous if it falls into the wrong hands. I was tasked with giving the sign to the just ruler. But I chose the wrong king. And eventually, the repercussions of my failure came to bear. The seal broke. The blight spread throughout Persia. For my failure, I was cast out of the realm of the gods. Imprisoned within a realm of shattered memories and forgotten souls. Redemption eluded my grasp. I was weak, consumed by pity, and resigned to my deserved fate. But then, something unexpected happened. A human found me. He too was broken and took pity on a fellow tormented soul. And deep within those strange eyes, I glimpsed something I had lost. Hope. Slowly, like the morning sun clambering over the horizon, consciousness came. He opened his eyes. How pleasant, he thought, to wake to nature's song. But something was not right. The song was out of tune. As he navigated the narrow paths, he breathed. 
breathed in the fresh mountain air. It focused his mind. Questions bobbed to the surface, like apples in water. How did I come to be here? He asked himself. No, that's not the right question. Nor is where I'm going. A single terrible realization crystallized in his fogged mind. I don't know who I am. Many stories have been told about poor souls who have forgotten the paths they have trodden. But there is more to this tale. That, I promise. The soft glow of the man's lantern fell on an exotic bird, a hoopoe. The recognition heartened him. Perhaps the bird would lead to further revelations. He followed the hoopoe on instinct. Its beautiful trail fanned the flame of hope. Nothing to find. He spotted something glinting among the rocks. Something that called to him. that hatchet out of the stone. A simple act with a remarkable outcome. The Revelations realm. There was no way back. Whatever this mysterious place was, he had to push on. The weight of the hatchets in his hands brought some comfort as he journeyed deeper. there, the man called, his voice muffled by the thick, static air. Please, help! Where are you? No answer. He then felt despair, the kind that only the truly alone know. But he was mistaken was another in this ethereal place. The tree was alive, but bound tight by otherworldly rocks and glowing tentacles. The blades of the man's hatchets were sharp. were friend or foe, but he felt its pain and fear. It mirrored his own.
What happened? The man cried. Where have you taken me? Calm yourself, human. Did you not want to leave that alien realm? The tree leaned closer and introduced himself as all seeds. A pomegranate tree. I... I don't know who I am, the man said. All seeds pondered. Others like me have been afflicted by a sickness. Help them, and I will return the favor. All seeds told the man to look for talisman stones. Strange rocks protruding from the ground. Destroying the talisman stones would free his kind. Then, the mighty tree extended a great branch outwards, pointing east. On Earth, I cannot wait to find the path forward, to find yourself. If you will help my kind, all seeds rumbled. I will return the good deed. The man could roll under low objects with ease. As he ran, the man mulled all seeds' words. How will rescuing the tree's kin help me recover my memory? He wondered. It appeared to be a diary entry, engraved into the stone. But to whom it belonged was a mystery. As he trod the winding path, the man thought about everything that had befallen him worried about the nature of the sickness that all seeds had spoken of. How extensive was it? And how would it manifest itself? Little did he know that the answer to the latter question would begin to reveal itself a few steps further. This must be one of All Seed's trees, the man thought, breathing hard after his encounter. The tree had unfurled its vibrant leaves, embracing all but forgotten sunshine. What were those nasty little creatures, the man thought? Are they tainted by this sickness or harbingers of it?
the second of all Seed's kin was released. Night cast its veil over the land. The inevitability of dusk, the serene quiet of it, brought the man a sense of peace. Seeds was right. There is a sickness afflicting nature. The talisman stones must be at the heart of it. But where did they come from? Were those swarming creatures defending them? So many questions, so few answers. And still, he didn't know who he was. My name is Farhad. But who was that pained woman? And why did she ask what she did?
Amethystine stones? Farhad wondered. Farhad found himself in the Celestial Revelations realm once more. The desperate whisper echoed through the strange starscape, calling, beckoning. of agony in those few years. Help me, Farhad, please. Show yourself, Farhad called into the twinkling black. Where are you? But if he was heard, the whisper didn't say. of the mysterious woman in his hazy memory. She who pleaded with him to come to her. The other, no doubt, was for Hod. Was she the key to his past and his future? As the statue brought down its hatchet, the white liquid flowed. Farhad could only hope that soon his thirst for answers would be quenched. bell shocked Farhad, but the guttural roar of some unseen creature terrified him far more. Something sinister was watching, waiting. But Farhad seemed to have one ally. Although all Seed's motivations were shrouded in mystery, he had come once again. What do you know of that place? Farhad asked all seeds. A shiver passed through the tree's branches. It is the realm of lost memories and forgotten souls. When I 
bit the pomegranate, Farhad said. I had a vision. I was engraving, sculpting. Is that what I do? Am I a sculptor? All seeds pondered. I cannot say, but memories can be hewn from stone. Consider that. More of my kind are trapped. If you can help them, perhaps I can provide answers. Farhad turned to leave, but all seeds held out a gnarled palm. Be warned, though, human, the great tree said. A fearsome monster, a thief, lurks in the Revelation's realm. Pistoon is its name. After the mountain on which you now stand. Keep away from it if you wish to live long enough to uncover the truth. Farhad asked all seeds how it became trapped in the Revelations realm. I was looking for the source of the sickness, the tree said with a sigh. I grew weary and planted my roots to rest. When I woke, the talisman stones surrounded me. I laid eyes on the ancient Deve, All Seeds said, as I struggled to escape my bonds. All Seeds' voice boomed out across the mountain as it spoke the creature's name. Bistoon! His memories. Perhaps working the stone would return them. Farhad stood back and admired the engraving. Despite all seeds' warning, Farhad felt the seed of hope taking root in his breast. Although the path behind and before him was shrouded in darkness, now there was light enough to see his feet. All seeds had proven that it could help Farhad regain his memories. And although he didn't yet have all the answers, he had purpose. And what is anyone without purpose? A fitting name for the greedy little creatures, Farhad thought.
Todd's smithing skills were no match for his sculpting prowess, but he was confident he could improve his hatchets. thoughts never wandered far from the lady in his memories, but her face eluded his grasp. Anything good. realized that being light on his feet was the key to evading the Perry's projectiles. But what new horrors awaited him? felt a new affinity with his hatchets, as though they were a part of him.
the last tree was cured of the blight. It was time to return to All Seeds. that huge hand belonged to. Bistoon, the ancient Deve, had its grip on the world. heart felt ready to burst out of his chest. Shireen, the name of the woman he loved. God had for 
forsaken this place, and a demonic creature made it its home. Roar had activated the talisman stones. The Hooper, Farhad's thankless guide, was trapped. Farhad couldn't help but dwell on All Seed's dire warning. Beware the Deev, Mistoon, if you value your life. was in grave danger. Farhad found his attention drawn to the floating island pierced by menacing light. He could remember nothing about it, but somehow it seemed familiar. embrace would cure the bird of its injuries. If only it could do the same for Farhad. You should not return to that cursed place, all seeds rumbled. Farhad shook his head. I must have answers, he said. I have to find Shireen. All seeds sighed. A sound like the wind rustling through leaves. Farhad asked all seeds about the giant floating island in the Revelations realm. Put the fortress of oblivion from your mind, all seeds said. You will never reach it with that weapon. All Seed's mouth cracked into a frown. The sickness is spreading, it said. The statue of the lady with a branch will aid you. Do not venture to the fortress of oblivion, All Seed's warned. It is aptly named. Find the statue of the lady holding a branch, All Seed said. Do not venture to the fortress of oblivion, All Seeds warned. It is aptly named. Forgotten his love. What has done this to me? He thought. A thousand thoughts and fears vied for supremacy in Farhad's head.
Thankfully, it seemed all seeds had healed the hoopoe's wounds. The little bird darted from one perch to another with a grace that brought a smile to Farhad's lips. But it was the lukewarm smile of a troubled man. He couldn't stop thinking about the floating island skewered by light in the Revelations realm. flooded through Farhad's body at the memory of Shireen's delicate face. The mention of an ancient temple piqued Farhad's curiosity. Another of those cursed arenas. Just how far had the blight spread? For Han's resolve hardened. If he didn't act, there may be no world left to recall. of Shireen grew stronger. He cherished each as the bee treasures nectar and vowed to never forget her again.
enemies are growing in might and stature, Farhan realized. The blight must be worsening. His train of thought was interrupted. A sweet scent found its way to him on the gentle breeze. It seemed to be coming from the temple ruins. Does the large stone ring the author described hold some power? Farhad wondered. His handle was carved from the fragrant branch of a pomegranate tree. Have I used this before? Farhad wondered. The feel of the pickaxe in his strong hand suggested the answer.
Todd sucked in deep breaths to recover his energy. But despite his exertions, he realized he was humming the broken notes of some long forgotten song. Prince at Armenia. It was a couple of years before Farhad built the milk canal for her new castle in Persia. Farhad's stomach. Those were royal soldiers, he thought, but they seemed mindless. Could the sickness affecting nature have spread to humans too? The notion struck Farhad with fear. fear settled into a crushing depression. Wherever he went, he encountered only forgotten destruction, like a battlefield long after the fighting is ended. There is no way to to stop this madness. A smile touched Farhad's lips, for he was well acquainted with those wondrous trees. shudder through Farhad. But why, he could not remember.
Farhad recalled why the little Hoopo had been with him since he awoke. But what of the other prisoners, he wondered. Seed's stern warning sharpened Farhad's senses as he entered the Revelations realm once more. thoughts. in his throat. He could feel eyes. that swept away his fears. Amidst the pealing bells, Bistoon's roars grew louder. Closer. But the fortress of oblivion beckoned. The path to his love was open. And so he ran. What did I say? All the seeds growled. We must leave! Now! But the Whisper! She needs my help! Farhad pleaded. All seats scowled. Anyone in that infernal place is already... The great tree broke off. Time had run. Farhad 
awoke to darkness, as thick and foreboding as a moonless night. Am I? No. He was still in the Revelations realm, but a forgotten, shattered part of it. The memory of Bastoon's terrifying appearance sent a shiver down Farhad's spine. Little wonder they named a mountain after him. I have to find all seeds and leave here. He clenched his fists and cursed his stubbornness. I should have listened, he muttered. All seeds was right, and now. He feared he would pay the price for his obstinacy. I have failed you, my love, he whispered into the darkness. Lost in his thoughts. At first, Farhad didn't notice the statues lining his path. Each depicted Farhad battling the enemies he had fought in the real world. Every one, the foes had overcome him. What does this mean? He thought. Who sculpted statues of my demise? Farhad swallowed a lump in his throat. This one was unfamiliar. Farhad swallowed a lump in his throat. This one was unfamiliar. We have to go, Farhan said. All seeds smiled. His voice was thin, a breeze rustling through leaves. To kill <coughs> mountain must build <coughs> new. Farhad gripped Allseed's amethystine heart. Tears stung his eyes. He sacrificed himself to send me back, he realized. One last time. Bastoon's mighty fingers had snuffed out the candle of hope. A great weariness overcame Farhad. He needed to rest, close his eyes. And what better place than beside the statue of the woman he had failed. Farhad, wake. wake up. A commanding, unfamiliar voice said, Wake up and follow me. Who said that? Farhad wondered. And why has the hoopoe taken all seeds' heart? Thank you.
It is good to finally speak to you, Farhad, the Hupo said. I am the goddess Anahita. Anahita explained that she had been under a spell of silence cast by Bastoon. She could speak again with the aid of the magic hidden inside all seeds for so long. The magic contained within his amethystine heart. Of course, Farhad had many questions. I will explain later, Anahita said. She told Farhad to follow her trail once again. Build an anvil, Anahita instructed. Trust me. Now, he could change his weapon at will. Come, time is short, Anahita said. We will talk on the way. Where are you taking me? Farhad asked. The goddess explained what she knew. All Seed's heart was the key to the Revelations realm, to the fortress of Oblivion. But without the tree itself, the heart's magic had waned. My temple bears a holy sign, Anahita said. It may be able to restore the heart's magical power. Have you seen the world pillar? Farhad asked Anahita. Once, the goddess replied. An old friend of mine lives in its branches. Why are you helping me? Anahita ruffled her feathers. I'm a guardian, the protector of women. I'm helping you to... to atone for my past mistakes. With that, she fell silent and would not explain further.
course, Farhad knew how it felt to forget everything. But to be the one forgotten, that was a new breed of torture. suddenly occurred to Farhad. He asked Anahita if she too had heard the whisper in the Revelations realm. You're not insane, if that's what you're asking, she said. Do you recall the moment you fell in love? Anahita asked. It was when she gave me her earrings for building the milk canal, Farhad said. I had not dared hope her kindness could match her beauty. In the Dark Realm, Farhad asked Anahita. I sought the source of the whispers, she replied. Once, there were many, but they all faded away, all save one. The Deev captured me before I could enter the fortress, Anahita said. I became trapped as a hoopo, unable to speak. Anahita, do you remember my eyes when I rescued you? Farhad asked. They glowed, the goddess said. Something stirred within you. I guided you away from the darkness, away from oblivion.
different ones, Farhad thought. If only I had Anahita's wings. Farhad asked Anahita what she meant by atoning for past mistakes. The goddess sighed. I was tasked with giving the holy sign to the just ruler. I gave it to the wrong person. Chaos spread through Persia. I was cast out. So he called the rock-throwing creatures Velgaird, Farhad muttered. Anahita squawked. Yes, irksome cowards. Tell her how you feel, Anahita said. No, but, but I... Farhad stuttered and felt his cheeks burn. Anahita's sigh spoke a hundred words.
not even try. Uh, I'm sorry that you were cast out, Anahita, Farhad said. You have nothing to be sorry about, the goddess replied, but I appreciate the sentiment. I was defenseless. I had nothing until all seeds gave me a branch and I built a weapon. The pickaxe, Farhad surmised. It is yours. Anahita shook her head. No, it is yours. I... I don't think I have thanked you for your help, Farhad said, shame burning his cheeks. When all seeds died, I lost all hope. I thought my journey was over. Anahita cocked her head and stared at Farhad. You have been through much, the goddess said. But I fear many trials still lie ahead. Creature, Farhad said. A guardian deve, Anahita replied. Come, we must be close to my temple now.
pomegranates. Perhaps all seeds came from the world pillar, Farhat mused. Farhad gazed upon the sigil with wonder and fear. Is that the holy sign? Yes and no, Anahita said. I built this one, one of many. It is based on the design that Ormazd gave me. Ormazd was not a name Farhad was familiar with. Ahura Mazda, the Lord of Wisdom, Anahita clarified. Suddenly, Anahita spoke with great fervor. Now my temple is safe. We can use this to finish what we started. Farhad refused to acknowledge what he had seen. He thought he must be mistaken. It appeared that he had already been to the Fortress of Oblivion, but he had emerged alone. How could I have left Shirin to her suffering? He thought. Guilt took hold. Wisdom to rival her beauty, Anahita said. She knows to seek help from a higher power. A life is a daunting prospect, the goddess continued. If one does not share one's troubles with others. Farhad furrowed his brow. Should we not have gone to the Revelations realm? He asked. Yes, Anahita replied. But the holy sign revealed something unexpected. All Seed's heart was a memory stone. It holds a memory like a sponge holds water, Anahita explained. Like the ones you have excavated in Mount Bestoon. But the engraving on All Seed's heart was incomplete. They needed to find the last temple to fully restore the memory. What do you know about these memory stones? Farhad asked. Better I show you, Anahita said. With great trepidation, Farhad took his pickaxe to Mount Bistoon once again.
life, and then the goddess spoke a word beyond Farhad's understanding. Returning to the Revelations realm brought a lump to Bahad's throat. Dread shuddered down his spine. We shouldn't be here, he said. The Deev, Bistoon, it will... It cannot hurt us, Anahita interrupted. Trust me. against the red mist, but could not force its way through. Animated. I have found the key to the memory stone, she said. She told Farhad that a single word was engraved on it, only visible in the Revelation Realm's strange light. Oblivion. What does that mean? Farhad asked. It is the key to all seeds' heart, the goddess said. It is where our friend now rests. <laughs> His voice was quiet and strained. Yes, this is the memory of my imprisonment. featured three people. On the right was Anahita in human form. On the left, Farhad's love, Shirin. But who is the man in the middle? Farhad asked. Anahita sighed. My greatest mistake. Farhad staggered as the earth growled and shuddered beneath his feet. The beast, caged for now, was banging on the bars with blows so mighty they crossed realms. We have Bastoon's attention, Anahita said. You must confront it. Uh, I'm not ready, Farhad said. How can I defeat such a creature? Anahita spread a wing. Look around. Look at what you've created. How far you've come. There is greater strength inside you than you care to acknowledge. Fear is inevitable, but you must not let it control you. If you do, then you have already lost. Follow me, Anahita continued. I owe you answers. He is my great mistake, Anahita said. I chose him. And I chose poorly. How does this help me defeat Bistoon? 
Farhad asked. Anahita sighed. You still have much to learn, human. Patience, for one. Everything has a weakness, the goddess said. Humans, Deev, even gods. But before Anahita could say what Bistoon's weakness was, she told Farhad they first had to address his. Guardian Deev, the usurpers of my... Anahita trailed off. Wait, someone is nearby. His jaw dropped. He couldn't believe who stood before him. She was more graceful than a swan, more beautiful than a moonlit lake. Farhad knew he should have felt only relief at seeing Shirin safe. But to his great shame, his happiness was tinged with chagrin. He had dreamed of saving her from imprisonment, yet here she stood. How did you escape? Farhad eventually said, his voice trembling. Escape, Shirin said, with furrowed brow. Why would I need to escape my castle? I have been there since you built the milk canal. But, but, you whispered to me, Farhad began. You are not well, Farhad, Shirin said. I have come to plead with you to stop this madness. But Shirin, my love, I do all this for you. Shirin cast down her eyes. I am sorry if I have misled, but you must know I do not love you. With those words, the bottom dropped out of Farhad's world. But he had no time to brood. said. She is in grave danger. Forget her harsh words. Prove that you are worthy of her affection. Farhad was frightened, his mind racing. He knew what had to be done.
wings with excitement. The bell, the bell would not peal, her small eyes brimming with sorrow. Anahita caught Farhad's despairing stare. Save her, the goddess said. Do not make a mistake as grave as mine. Anahita fought hard, but could not withstand the deep's might. For Hod wept, for he had lost another friend to Bistoon. Despite Shirin's cruel rebuff, For Hod longed to help her, but he could make no sense of her injuries. He gripped all seeds' amethystine heart as the drowning man clutches the rope. I failed you, he whispered to the stars. Please, show me what to do. And then, a memory floated to the surface. A single word, oblivion. Don't give up, Farhad pleaded. Stay with me. Farhad cradled her in his arms, as if she were made of porcelain. And he saw something wonderful, the slight rise and fall of her chest. I will take you home, princess, Farhad whispered. The rain ran down his craggy face and rivulets, masking his tears. Perhaps you do not love me, he said, sobbing. But I fought a mountain for you, and I put trusting friends in harm's way. And selfish as it may be, I would do it all again. As Farhad walked, Shirin started murmuring. Farhad leaned close. She whispered but a single word, Kosro. Suddenly, it all made sense to Farhad. The stone carving. The two were the perfect couple. The king of Persia and the princess of Armenia. How could a lowly sculpture question such a union? Suddenly, Farhad ground his teeth as a great fury washed over him. Not at Shirin, or even Khosro, but at himself. What was I thinking? How could a princess love someone like me? But it doesn't do to wallow in self-loathing and other questions wormed their way through Farhad's anger. If not Shirin, then who does the Whisper belong to? How could he defeat Bistoon and enter the Fortress of Oblivion? Why even try now? Farhad was ashamed by his selfish musings. What happened to Anahita? He thought. Does she need my help?
lost in his wretched thoughts. Farhad nearly failed to notice something alarming. Shirin's dainty feet were turning gray. I can't feel my legs, Shirin mumbled. Shh, be at peace, Farhad reassured her. You will be all right, as Anahita was. Shirin furrowed her brow. Anahita? Farhad swallowed and drew in a deep breath. She was... is your guardian. She risked everything to help me. He trailed off with a hoarse croak. I should check the rift is still sealed, Farhad thought, recalling the memory stone. What does the statue hold? Farhad wondered. Greetings, Farhad. My sources tell me you are a man of your word. Perhaps I should be impressed. But reports of your engravings give me cause to question your sanity. I had thought that when Princess Shirin herself revealed that she does not return your love, you would cease your efforts. If you must persist, so be it. I will not stand in your way. Just remember that I require complete, unhindered passage through Mount Bistoon. Only then will I grant you your wish. Know that I have sent my best horsemen to bring the princess home. In the meantime, you are responsible for her safety. Your king, Khosro. Something about Khosro's tone set Farhad on edge. When the riders came, he decided to be absent. Greetings, Farhad. My sources tell me you... My lady, Farhad began. Forgive me. I could sit here by your side for a hundred years and the gentle rise and fall of your chest alone would sustain me. Farhad swallowed a sob. But I cannot stay. Anahita, the one I mentioned. I must find her, but do not be afraid. The king's men approach like thunder. You will be safe with them. Safer than you ever will be with me. And with that, he gently kissed his love on the forehead and resigned himself to never seeing her again. Princess Sheeran traveled here alone. Farhad tried to reassure himself. Harm will not befall her. The choice was a difficult one, but Farhad could not abandon his friend. After all, both he and Shirin owed Anahita their lives, and while a broken heart may ache for years, death happens but once. Perhaps Anahita's last temple would suggest her whereabouts.
its ugly head. Cosro's letter was condescending, haughty, oppressive. Sheeran would no doubt be safe with the king, but at what cost? fingers brushed all seeds heart so that is how you came to print he muttered <laughs> failed to ring the giant bell in the battle against Bistoon. If I had been able, he thought, perhaps Anahita would still be here. stared at the smooth gray stone of Shirin's statue. Her foot, her skin was turning to stone. Of course, Khosrow's letter had alluded to something else. An agreement between Farhad and the king. Why does he want passage through Mount Bistoon? Farhad wondered. And what wish does he speak of? Could it be... Shirin? The thought angered Farhad. The princess was not a prize to be awarded. mighty and terrifying. And if Anahita had overcome it, why hadn't she returned? Ah! 
solution to Farhad's problems. Bistoon caused the blight. And when night falls, I could return for this, Farhad thought. himself. All this will be behind her. within Farhad, but resolve overcame both. This time, he knew what had to be. Farhad realized that now that the stairs were clear, the path was back Every realm, Farhad thought. If there are more, are there other Deev? I'm not the only one to have entered the Revelation's realm, Farhad thought with gladness. Visit a strange place often enough, and it soon loses its mystique. But this was the memory stored within all Seed's heart. A story for Hod needed to know. What is this for? <laughs> An iron flow, hot and angry. For Hod scoured his memories for all seeds' last words. To kill a 
mountain, build something new. The mountain was clear, but build what? The hammer was huge and heavy, but Farhad carried it with ease. As he rounded the corner in the floating path, a gasp escaped Farhad's lips. Shattered remnants of his friend hung suspended in the air, unmoving, cold, lifeless. shouted into the darkness. It tolls for thee!
The storm within Farhad's heart rivaled the one that rent the dark skies. Bastoon was defeated, but at such cost. He felt more alone than he had ever felt before. For the first time since he awoke on Mount Bistoon, his path was clear, but he had no one to share the news with. Princess Shirin would be resting in Kosro's quarters.
for hard. What have you done? What vile sickness did you expose my love to? You have no reason to dig through the mountain any longer. Princess Sheeran is dead. Your king, Khosrow. ended for Hod's journey before, and it was not about to now. Instead, for Hod drew ever closer to answers. The final steps on the path laid out before him, the path that ended in the realm of forgotten memories. The Fortress of Oblivion awaited him, and Farhad thought of all those who had played their part in getting him here. All seeds, with his wisdom, Kind heart, majestic on a heat, so dedicated to atoning for her greatest mistake. The beautiful princess, always out of reach. And the king, who had treated him with such disdain, but none of them mattered anymore. The whisper called to him, I called to him. Boding chilled for Hod as he walked amongst the horrors. Exiled and forgotten people, ensnared by the blight, trapped in endless suffering, their silent screams frozen in their gullets. Still, I cried out across the realms. Unimaginable agonies racked my body. Yet I never sought refuge in insanity. The wound that never heals reminded me of my mortality and my purpose.
I looked into Farhad's eyes and saw his pain and confusion. But even then, I saw a flicker of something else. Was it relief? Words eluded him, however. So I explained everything. I told him my name is Nizami. I was a blacksmith by day and a storyteller by night. I was banished by King Khosro, exiled unjustly. On Mount Bistoon, I was mortally wounded, but saved by the most wondrous fruit and guided by a talking tree. Then, I discovered an otherworldly domain, a realm of forgotten souls. But the Deev found me. I was imprisoned in the fortress of oblivion, doomed to be forgotten, teetering on the edge of oblivion. Agony poured from my wound and took form. You, Farhad, are created out of my pain, out of my wound, I told him. You are the manifestation of hope, the embodiment of purpose. I had lost count of the number of times Farhad had reached my prison, but each time he had refused my plea, refused to set me free. I knew the choice was grim, but I had to prevail. My story is not yet complete, and so I gave him a choice. Liberate me, or abandon me once more. The path to the left was where he should engrave the wise decision to set me free. Or he could add to the cruel records of abandonment to the right. You... you lie, Farhad said, his hands trembling. But I knew he did not believe his own words. It is just human nature to question that which explains all. Farad seized his head and yelled, Tell me the truth! Calm yourself, Farad, I said in a soothing tone. Do not let anger confuse your thoughts. We are one, I repeated. I feel every pain that you do. But the difference, I told him, is that my pain never dwindles. The moments of serenity as dusk falls, the sense of triumph when a fearsome foe has been vanquished. You experience these things and more, I said. I have only pain, and when you faltered, and my agony was too much to bear. You were reborn from my wound. With my words, Farhad recalled his visions of leaving the fortress alone. Look at me, Farhad, I implored. You do not realize how special you are. You are a part of me, but more than I could ever be. I knew his uncertainty, but I explained that, unlike me, he has a choice to free me or make the mistake of abandoning me again, to embrace the rare gift that I have offered, meaningful purpose, or shun it. Afflicting nature, 
the reason behind the chaos that sweeps through Persia and destroy it. But sadly, there was a catch. To leave my unnatural shackles empty would draw unwanted attention, for Hard would have to take my place. At this, the sculptor growled and turned his head. Wait, I implored. You do not understand. I told him how this sacrifice would give his life meaning. After all, it was his purpose. It was what he was created for. The only way he could escape the cycle. And I promised that when my quest was complete, I would come back to return the favor. made the right decision, I told him. Before I left, Farhad asked me if his sacrifice would be worth it. There is no greater blessing than having purpose, I told him. No worse pain than having it denied. I promised I would not rest until I had stopped the sickness afflicting nature. I would rescue other poor imprisoned souls and face the threats before me with the courage that Farhad had shown. بیاورد زحاک را چون نبند به کوه دماوند کردش ببند به کوه اندرون تنگ جایش گزید نگه کرد قاری بنش ناپدید بیاورد مسمارهای گران به جایی که مغزش نبودن دران فرو از دستش بران کوه باز بدان تا بماند به سختی دراز به وستش بران گونه آویخته از او خون دل بر زمین ریخته از اون نام زهاک چون خاک شد جهان از بل او همه پاک شد abandoning me again. You only prolong the bitter cycle, I told him. You will lose your memories once more. Your destiny is not one of futility and confusion. And I told him that I would keep calling him, and he would come. Is that what you want? I asked. To go through all the heartache you have endured yet again? But I could not force him to see reason. If he would leave me again, 
I promised to send him away from this place. I would show him how to use the memory stone within his head to leave the fortress of oblivion. But what would he be escaping for? Endless wandering? Repetition without purpose? This was not the end. I will see you again soon. Once again, Farhad refused his destiny and condemned me to further torment. How many times he has failed me, I cannot say. Perhaps neither of us will ever be free. Perhaps the blight will spread unchecked. But my purpose still burns as fiercely as the agony in my chest. And Farhad's story has not yet ended. It cannot end yet. A wave of nausea washed over Farhad. He stumbled. Darkness closed in. He staggered on. Before oblivion drew in again. He lost consciousness again and again. Panic streaked through his muddled mind. And then... He remembered my warning, the bitter cycle. With every step, his memory slipped away. I must engrave Nizami, he thought. I must not forget. Farhad sought to immortalize my story in stone, lest he forget again. Against all odds, he did it. He looked back at all the engravings he had made and found hope in them. Hope that he could walk a different path. Slowly, like the morning sun clambering over the horizon, consciousness came. He opened his eyes. How pleasant, he thought, to wake to nature's song. As he navigated the narrow path, he breathed in the fresh mountain air. It focused his mind. Questions bobbed to the surface, like apples in water. The same questions that he had struggled to answer at the start of the last cycle. But of course, Farhad knew nothing of that. He did not even know his own name, if you recall. I promised there was more to his tale. He sought a way off the mountain, and some buried memory drew him to the tunnel he had excavated. به گفتا دل ز مهرش کی کنی پاک به گفتا نگه که باشم خفته در خاک به گفتا جان مره بس دل که با اوست به گفتا دشمنم این هر دو بی دوست به گفتا گر خرامی در سرایش به گفتا دازم این سر زیر پایش به گفتو آن من شد زو مکنیاد به گفتین کی کند بیچاره فرهاد 
که آجز گشت خسرو در جوابش نیامد بیش پرسیدن سوابش به یاران گفت کس خاکی و آبی ندیدم کس بدین حاضر جوابی به زر دیدم که با او بر نیایم چه زرش نیست بر سنگ و آسمایم که ما را هست کوهی برگزرگاه که مشکل میتوان کردن به دورا میان کوه راهی کرد باید چنان کامد شد ما را بشاید به کوهی کرد خسرو ره نمونش که خاند هر کس اکنون بی ستونش